Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to download some multi-band imagery for Landsat from the Glovis website. So the first thing we need to do is fire up our web browser, and I'm using Firefox, which works particularly well for some reason. And there's my shortcuts, which is glovis.usgs.gov. And this is using Java to run in your browser, so it can take up to half a minute. Uh, for the screen to set itself up. And you'll notice that on the top left you've got a, a map of the world which is where we can just click uh, to download images for a particular location. Or here we can enter uh, either the, uh, the path and row if we know it or the latitude and longitude coordinates and click on go. Um, I am actually going to download some data for New Zealand so I'm going to pan right across and down for New Zealand and I want somewhere in the uh, southern area of the South Island of New Zealand so I'm just going to move the crosshair cursor of the mouse and just click and it looks as though nothing's happening but actually it is you can see it says reading inventory on on the right there um, and so here's our region of uh, New Zealand and you can see the individual tiles uh, that you can download uh, and you just select a particular tile uh, that you're interested in a particular region. Um, so this is showing for February 2015 at the moment. Um, if you want to go back uh, in time to have a look at images from the 1980s, you can just select the earliest, which would be January uh, 1988, and click on Go and what you can then do is click on the next scene button and keep cycling through. Now you'll notice that there are problems like this one with images that have uh, rather a lot of cloud cover. So one of the things you can do here is change the level of uh, discrimination that you're willing to accept as a threshold for cloud contamination. So we can set that to 10% for example. Uh, if you really wanted cloud free images you could go down to zero but 10% shouldn't exclude too many. So I'll go back here to January uh, 1988 and click on Go. And you can see that it actually jumps to 2001. Uh, and then you can just keep clicking on Next Scene. Um, and you can keep going from image to image, going through time. Now, it's a bit difficult to see the detail in some of these images because by default, uh, the resolution is set at 1000 meters, so I'm going to reduce that uh, to 240 meters. So now I'm looking at an entire tile rather than all of the surrounding tiles as well. And when you look at this, you can actually see in this example uh, that there are stripes in some of the images, which is one of the characteristics of the sensor. Uh, not all of them are affected by stripes, but some of them are. So if that's an issue, and I certainly don't like having to use techniques to get rid of those stripes which is a form of data manufacturing so I'm going to keep on persevering until I find a relatively stripe free uh, image scene bearing in mind that I am actually requiring it to have uh, no more than 10% of cloud contamination so I can keep cycling through and you can see how many of these scenes uh, do have some issues with cloud contamination um, I'm actually going to see what I can get more recent times maybe around 2014. Okay, so there we go. There's a nice image scene uh, with the, most of the cloud in that, that image is actually over the sea. Uh, and this is for December 2014. So if I want to download that image, uh, all I need to do is click on the Add button. And it will add that now. And you can see it's put a, a, a green border around the tile. Uh, it's added it to the list. And if I wanted to, I could uh, click on Next Scene and find another image that I quite like the look of, and I could add that as well. And I could add numerous tiles, numerous scenes on there if I wanted to. Um, this is particularly useful if you're looking at something changing through time, like uh, uh, evidence of, of climate change, for example. I'm only going to show you how to download an image, so I don't need a, a list of images. So I'm just going to delete that second image and go back to the original one. Um, and so to download that, I just click on the uh, Send to Cart button. 
Now, it kind of treats this a little bit like buying something on the internet, where it talks about a, a basket, except, of course, it doesn't ask you for any money. Um, and so what you need to do is just click on Toggle All Bulk Download, which is the most efficient way of setting this up, and then it'll, it'll tick that automatically. Click on Apply. I've only got one image in my basket, so now I'm, I can proceed. And I can go to the checkout. And when I click on Submit Order, that basically tells the Glovis system that I'm ready to download the data. OK, now, if this is the first time that you've been through this process, there are two things that you need to know. First of all, I'm already logged in here. Um, I do have an account with uh, Glovis, with the USGS, and it's free. And you can create an account uh, to, to log in later if you wish. Um, and you, as long as you make a note of your login credentials each time you visit Glovis, uh, it will ask you to, to log in uh, if you haven't used it recently. The second thing is that if you've not been through this before, you need to download a little helper application called the bulk download application. And it does, when you get to the end of this process, show you uh, a link uh, and it says bulk download application. If you click on that link, uh, you can install this for Macintosh or for Windows. It's another application that uses Java. Um, now, I've already downloaded this, so I don't need to install this again. So uh, if this is your first time, you would just download that and install it like any other Windows application. So I'll come out of my browser because I've been through the process of getting the data now. And I've got a link here to the bulk download application, which I'm going to run. And it will ask me now to log in with the same Glovis login credentials I used before. And I've actually got a couple of different images because I was on Glovis uh, earlier today. And so the most recent one is uh, the one timed at 6.54 p.m., which is the one for uh, New Zealand, which I just showed you. So I'm just going to select that order and then click on the Select Order button. And you can see that it's it's got the, the name of the image seen. It tells me it's level one, which is uh, uh, multi-band data, which is in GeoTIFF format. It tells me that it's for the Landsat 8 spacecraft, and it's almost a gigabyte in size. Uh, it needs to know where I want it to be put. Uh, so if I click on the button here, choose a directory to save downloads, uh, I'm actually going to choose the desktop. And to start the process, I just click on the Begin Download button. And so that will now download that data from the USGS server directly to, in this case, my desktop. It is almost a gigabyte, so it will take quite a while. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll I'll put it on pause and I'll come back to you in just a moment when it's alre already uh, kind of finished downloading. Okay, so we're almost finished. There we go, it's finished downloading. Uh, would I like to select another order? No. I'll leave that for the time being. So now that's finished downloading my data, uh, I can just exit the bulk download application. And what you'll see is I nominated the desktop. Um, it's downloaded it into a folder with the, the order number. Uh, and if we look inside there, there's another uh, folder, which is just telling me the type of data. It's from Landsat 8. And there's my data file. It's nearly a gigabyte in size. And it has a .tar extension. Um, which is, because it's come from a Unix system, it's kind of like the Unix equivalent of a, a zip file. And what you may want to install is a very good, very useful and free application uh, called 7-Zip. And uh, you should really donate if you use this a lot. Uh, it can be installed on 32 and 64-bit Windows. Um, and I've basically got 7-Zip installed here, and 7-Zip is a kind of Swiss army knife of different types of 
uh, of archive file format. Um, and the way to access the, the data contained in this tar file is to right click on it with the right hand mouse button, select 7-zip and have it extract that to uh, a tar file. Now of course this is quite big so this is going to take a while as well so I'll just pause you again and bring you in. Okay so it's just about finished um, removing all of the compressed data in that file and it's created another folder and this time it's 1.7 gigabytes in size that's another uh, tar file inside it and again I right click with the right hand mouse button select 7-zip and I'm just going to have it extract to and this long uh, folder name is actually the original identification uh, name for that particular image scene and it shouldn't take too long because it's all already kind of uncompressed what's inside that tar file it's basically just glued them together and what we've got here is uh, the individual uh, bands for Landsat 8 um, and each of them, of course, as a TIFF file, tagged image file format, uh, or GeoTIFF, because it contains all of the information in the header. And here we are, we can see all of the different bands available. Um, and crucially, there is a text file, which is this one, uh, which has uh, got an underscore MTL file extension. Uh, and this is going to be very useful. You mustn't delete this or changes in any way because that's what we're going to use next uh, to actually extract some of the values for the uh, the image scene that we need to use to generate radiance reflectance and other products so that's how you download uh, for a single scene as an example uh, how you actually download your data from uh, global